everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and this is part two of my ATEM2ME production switcher review, and I am now shooting on it, and uh, I'll give you a little spoiler, this is probably going to be the last video that I shoot on it also. I'm going back to my old one because as great as the super source function is, the reason I bought it, uh, everything else is just not working for me. So I'm going to go step through the bad news first, and then I'll show you some of the good stuff too. Uh, so first problem, when I plugged it in, uh, was the fans are extremely loud. And I'm going to pull up my uh, camera that's next to it so you just so you can get a sense as to how loud it is. So, so that's pretty loud. And uh, it's even picking up on this mic too. And this mic is really good at not picking up some of the noises that happen down here in the studio. But uh, it's picking up that fan and I just it's, it's going to drive me crazy and I just can't live with it. So uh, the ATEM 1ME, which is what I've been using before, the old version, is completely silent. The 2ME, the old version of the 2ME, is also fanless. This one has got like a wind tunnel running through it. It's just not going to work. So uh, I'm going to, you know, that was strike one. I may have been able to work around it, uh, maybe put it somewhere or put a box around it or something that could have dampened the sound out. However, uh, the second problem I encountered was far more difficult, which is uh, there's only one HDMI port on the 2ME 4K. And I knew that going in. Uh, and I assumed that I would be able to run my computers via HDMI through my uh, HDMI to SDI adapters, and uh, it's not working. I can't get my computers to show up at all. They are switching to the proper resolution, 1080i, uh, at you know the NTSC uh, refresh rate and everything, but I'm not getting anything up on the screen, and it's been driving me crazy. The second I plug the computer into the HDMI port, it works fine, but uh, for a lot of the reviews that I do, and also for the interviews that I'm going to be doing, I'm probably going to have you know maybe two or three HDMI devices plugged in uh, at the same time, and if I can't get those to work on the 2ME, uh, it's not going to work for me either. So uh, that was strike two. And then uh, strike two and a half was just the fact that my old uh, trustworthy camera here, my good luck HV20, um, wasn't connecting at all, not even through the SDI. Everything else works through my SDI adapters with the exception of the computers, but uh, this camera, even in HDMI mode, wouldn't connect either. So um, there's just too many you know, gotchas here that are not gonna work for me, and I just feel like I'm, I'm gonna be frustrated you know, filtering out uh, the background noise of the fans blowing and then having to you know, deal with all these issues of not being able to connect multiple HDMI devices. You know, really, I don't have a lot of time uh, sometimes to make the videos that I do. I like to come down here, flick a switch, start recording, uh, go upstairs and upload, and I'm not able to do that at the moment based on how this is configured. So um, it's not any fault, I don't, I don't think, of the hardware itself. It's just that uh, what it doesn't have is what I need as far as connections go, and I thought I could get by uh, with um, you know, some of these adapters and uh, be able to plug things in like I did before, and it's just, uh, it's just not working. But there are some cool things about this, and it's going to kill me to not have these features at my fingertips, but uh, I'm going to walk through the super source now so you can see uh, how this multi-layering works, because it actually does a really good job at that. So let's go head over to the computer and take a look. So here is the software control panel running on my Mac, and when you have a 2ME, you get the option for super source in the corner here. So uh, you can pull this down, and there's a bunch of different presets that you can set. So maybe we'll start with this uh, four-layer one, uh, and then what we'll do here is go into our different boxes that we can configure. Uh, so we'll say box one will be camera two, which is my camera right now. Uh, maybe the other source will make this HDMI, so we'll kind of see our control panel on there. Camera um, four is another camera I have hooked up, so we'll throw that one in there. And I'm running out of things to, uh, to show you because I couldn't get everything working. So maybe what I'll do uh, is just make this last one uh, color bars so we can see how that looks. Now, one of the things that I ran into when I was trying to get this to work was I couldn't find the button to put the super source online. And I thought I could you know, specify one of these camera buttons to do it, but you can't. And if you don't have like a super large display, what happens is, is they uh, make you hit the shift key to get that super source up. And that was a, another issue that I was like, oh boy, this is going to be tough, especially if I'm doing this live. I like to use a touchscreen display on a Windows 8 tablet to run my switcher. And to hit the shift key and then uh, go to super source was a bit of a problem. But what I discovered was I could go to the second switcher, because there's two switchers built into this, uh, set the super source as the program on uh, that 2ME switcher, go back to the one, and then just hit 2ME program, which would then allow me to uh, just do a single button push without the shift key to get that up. So, um, so let's pull that up, and you can see, here we go. We've got uh, four displays going at the same time. And what's cool is that I can also run a fifth source, and this is killing me not to be able to use this, I can run a fifth source uh, underneath it. So I can go over to uh, the art section here, and let me switch back to the HDMI for a second. 
uh, and I can just ask it to fill it with something here. And I'm going to say uh, fill it with media player one. And this is another neat feature of this uh, 2ME is that I can go to here. I've loaded in, and I did, <coughs> did this before I started. Um, this has a pretty large frame buffer, and I loaded in a uh, looping background. And when you want to do loops on uh, the 2ME, you have to kind of do it um, by uh, outputting individual frames. So I outputted like about 10 seconds of a looping uh, background in Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to start this, and now we're going to cut back to our super source, and you can, well, at least to our media, and you can see this running. This is a, pretty much a, just a series of JPEGs running. There's a little bit of artifacting here with the, uh, the dithering. It's not looking too good, but I can go over to um, looping here and let it, let it kind of loop. So now we've got um, that looping, and now what we're going to do is pull my super source back up. And what you'll be able to see is now I've got this video thing running in the background plus uh, four other sources. And then you can also uh, change everything. So you can you know, change the location of the boxes. I can move you know, this one over a little bit, let's say. Um, and you can really kind of really finely tune this as you go. And I was really excited that this really does uh, work as, you, as I thought it was going to work. And what's really cool is that you, you can even add in additional stuff. So you've got uh, two downstream and two upstream keyers available, including DVE. So what I could even do is go to my upstream keyer, um, select DVE here, and have it uh, pop up another video source on top of these five that I've got already. So I can pretty much uh, do this. I could um, you know, make this, uh, you know, adjust the size of this. I mean, it's pretty much uh, you know, a separate source, the super source, and it lets you do uh, some really cool stuff. And I am, it is just, oh, let me get rid of this uh, thing here. It is just absolutely killing me. I can't get all my stuff plugged in here. So I'm going to upload this video in the hopes that someone watching has a little bit more expertise with this and might be able to lend me some advice because um, for this amount of money, I can't just you know, play around with it for this much longer. I think uh, if, it's, uh, if it's not working, I've got 30 days on uh, return policies with B&H to uh, ship it back, and I want to do that. So if I can't get these computers working through uh, the SDI connections, it's going to go back probably Monday or Tuesday. Um, but as you can see, that super source is just so awesome, and it's just something I'm just dying not to be able to use. So I'm going to um, play around a little bit more, try a little bit harder, uh, see if I can get these computers going. But uh, if not, uh, we'll have to come up with some other source. And I'd love to hear uh, maybe some ideas that you all might have. And I might actually take another look at the TriCaster because if I'm able to do it uh, through the TriCaster, even if it does involve having to uh, convert all my HDMI sources to component, uh, it might be worth it because now I've gotten a taste of you know, being able to do this multi-layered video here and it is really just killing me again not to be able to do it. So we'll keep uh, plugging away there, but I wanted to show you the super source and this is Lon Sybin and maybe I'll have another video with some more successes uh, later on this weekend, but I'm not uh, very hopeful at the moment. Thanks for watching.